When we left him here in university, there was a, where his dorms were, his room, and there was a basketball court. And the children, the whites are playing here, the blacks are playing here. And after two weeks, we came to visit him. He was playing with them. Everyone was playing together. I asked him, Humayun, what happened? Have you made a team? He said, I just brought them together. They had some hesitation, something in them, but I brought them together. Let's play together, why not? Some of his unit members tell us he wasn't just their captain, their boss. He was their counselor. The last time when on the airport he left, when he was going back to Germany to go to Iraq, he looked at me, he turned his head, and this, this is what I felt that time, the, the expressions and the love that he had in his eyes. Every night, 17 years now, and I loved that scene that he looked at me, and I can feel it here. It happened June 8th and Mother's Day was 13, I think 13 of May. That was the last conversation that we had. He called me and said, I said, please be careful. People are very, the situation is no good. Be careful there. Don't go out. Let other people go out. He said, Mom, these are my soldiers. I have to take care of them. He was scheduled to come on duty on that uh, fateful Tuesday, but uh, he had sensed that there was something uh, not right around the camp. So he uh, comes at 8 o'clock in the morning, because that is the time when inside the camp soldiers are having breakfast to leave for the day. And then through his efforts, he had arranged local Iraqis to come and work in the camp so that they can earn the wages uh, to make their life a little better. So they were lined up outside to come in and soldiers were having breakfast in the morning to, to leave. That is when he is outside uh, making sure that everything is going smoothly, we are told. He sees a fast-moving uh, car coming towards the gates. He realizes that this is unusual. He shouts to his members of his unit that were at guarding the gate that hit the ground, and he takes with his hand extended, he takes 10 steps forward towards oncoming this car. I am sure he was a trained military officer. He must have realized the danger. He just gave his life and he saved 300 Iraqis that were standing there and maybe six, 700 because this car was going straight in the camp and was going to blow everyone there. at his burial in Arlington Cemetery. After the internment is complete, we see a young kid, about 10 years old, in a black suit, standing at the grave and saluting. We were touched and didn't know who this kid was, who this person was. And uh, I started to ask, and of course, when mm -hmm. this kid came towards where we were all standing away from the grave, uh, I went and spoke with the parent and asked him who you are and who this uh, young person is. 
Uh, they said we live as faculty close to Hereford, which was Himayu's dormitory. And their son would come from school and would be by himself. And we introduced him to Himayun. And Himayun would uh, mentor him, would teach him, would help him with his homework, would take him for jogging, would take him to play basketball. And uh, we were so pleased that, uh, that he has found a mentor who is so caring and so kind. So when the news came that Himayun was killed, uh, he could not believe and we told our son. We told him that we would like to go to his burial. He said, uh, I want to go as well to pay my tribute to my friend. And, but I don't want to go like this. Look at the expression of the affection and the respect. Uh, he said that I want you to take me to a clothing store. I want to buy a suit and a tie and a white shirt. I want to properly pay respect to my friend.